Hello guys, this is Dr. Mahendra and your Forensic Medicine and Toxicology faculty. Here with we are starting with the first video on Forensic Fast Forward 3.0. The chapter is Sexual Jurisprudence. We are going to see the explanations of the questions we have seen earlier. The first question, a 40 year old married woman comes to ER claiming to be pregnant. Uh, symptoms of increased abdominal size, whitish discharge from her nipples, feeling of fetal movement in her lower abdomen. Her LMP was uh, four months back and primary physician examined her and confirmed that she was not pregnant but still she continues to believe that. And she has similar episodes in the past. Which of uh, the following is not true? Right? Which is not true about the condition? First of all, the condition is, friends, it is phantom pregnancy, also called a spurious pregnancy. What are the options are being given? Presumptive signs of pregnancy may be present. Positive signs of pregnancy may be present. USG done to confirm the diagnosis. Refer her to psychiatrist. See, first of all, this is a phantom pregnancy. It's clear. Uh, in phantom pregnancy, what happens? Like the female will be having all subjective symptoms. That is, presumptive signs of pregnancy will be there. For example, laminuria, abdominal distension, uh, breast enlargement. All these findings will be there. Uh, the reason for all these things is due to hormonal imbalance. But the positive signs of pregnancy, for example, uh, the palpation of fetal parts and the auscultation of fetal heart sounds will not be there because she is basically not pregnant. There is no fetus inside. And the absence of fetus inside the uterus cavity can be confirmed with the USG. And since it is a psychological condition, you have to send her for counseling. So among the given options, this positive signs of pregnancy may be present. That option is wrong. Right? That is not true. Which of the following is not an offense in India? A female running naked in public. A male continuously following a female in, in person when she is interested. A, fem, a male committing fraudulism in a crowded place. A male committing unanism in train. A male committing necrophilia. Right? So these are the acts which have been given. If you see one by one the female running naked in public, obviously it's a public nuisance. It will be punishable. A male continuously following a female in person when she is interested. Right? When she is not interested, when it is done in spite of clear disinterest, that is punishable called stalking, which is punishable under 354D. But here the wordings are different. I've given different wordings. Right? When she is interested, it is not punishable. A male committing fraud tourism in a crowded place. What is fraud tourism? The male achieves sexual gratification by pressing his private parts against a female in a crowded place. That is called fraud tourism. And obviously it is punishable under section 290 IPC. 290. Right? IPC. It's penal code. Okay. A male committing onanism in train. First of all, you need to know that what is onanism? It is basically the synonym of masturbation. When a male commits masturbation in a public place like train obviously it is a public nuisance it will be punishable a male committing necrophagia and philia both will cause indignity to human corpse and that is basically punishable under 297 ipc right 297 any act any act which uh, cause disrespect which causes disrespect to human dead body it is punishable under 297 ipc Okay, so let us see the next question. A police brought a dead body for autopsy. During autopsy, the medical officer conducts autopsy and necessary test to find out live born or dead born. Okay, which of the following is not a feature of dead born child? First of all, what are the signs of uh, intrauterine death of fetus? What is intrauterine death of fetus? Who is dead born? If a baby dies inside the uterus itself, that's called dead born. What is life born? The baby is born alive and shows signs, any of the signs of life. The most important one is respiration. Right? So we are going to check whether the baby is a dead born or not. What are the three important signs of dead born? Let us revise. We have three important signs of dead born. One is uh, rigomatous, maceration, mummification. If the just born fetus show, shows any of these signs, that is rigomatous, maceration, mummification, you can say that it is dead inside the uterus itself. Okay, let's see which is not a feature. Spalding sign, yes, it is a feature of maceration where the vault bones override each other. It is definitely a sign of dead bone. 
Skin slippage, one of the earliest sign of maceration. Again, that is dead bone. Sweetie shoulder, it is seen with maceration. Yes. Absence of gelatinous tissue in the middle ear. Do remember, friends. Absence of gelatinous tissue middle ear. It says that it says that baby is given breathing. It means, see, when the baby is just born, the baby will have gelatinous tissue in the middle ear. As the baby starts breathing, all the gelatinous tissue will be cleared off. It will be washed off from the middle ear. Right? This is one of the important tests for live born itself. We call it as Redden's test. Right? We call it as Redden's test. Fine. So we can say option D, option D can be chosen. Okay, let us move on to the next question. A newborn baby was found in open field. The police officer brought the dead body into for autopsy. During autopsy, the medical officer conducts all the necessary tests to find out live born or not. Which of the following is not needed to check? Regat's test, lung flotation test. Yes, because Legat test is the other name of hydrostatic test, which is basically we are checking the flotation of the lung, whether lung floats or sinks. Redden's test, just now I told you, Redden's test, we are checking the presence of middle ear gelatin. If it is not there, we can say baby has given breathing. Static test, is, is as I told you, it is the other name of lung flotation test. It is hydrostatic test. We have three names, hydrostatic test, lung flotation test, and Regas test. Do, uh, do know about the synonyms. Sometimes the, these synonyms will, be, uh, will often be used to confuse you. Breast loss third life test, stomach bubble test. Do remember friends, it is not breast loss third life test, it is breast loss second life test. It is breast loss second life test. Fine, so this option, this is not a test we do. Breast loss second life test to check stomach bubble test or stomach flotation test. Incremental lines in the enamel of the teeth. Do we check the incremental lines or the presence of incremental line? Does it say that it is live on? Yes, friends, see, you must be knowing about neonatal line. We have a method of age estimation that is Boyd's method where we check the incremental lines in the teeth, right? One of the most important, the first important incremental line is the neonatal line, which appears by the second or third day of birth, right? After birth, by second or third day, you can see the presence of neonatal line electron microscopy. So if you can see the presence of incremental line or neonatal line, that means the baby must have born alive and it should have survived for at least two, three days. Okay, so we can say that is also one of the important uh, finding to say that it is live one. So among the given options, we can say that option D is wrong. Fine. Next question. 35 year old man is brought to you dressed in women's clothing. On further questioning, you find that he gets sexual pleasure from doing so. What is this? Is this a case of Unison, scatologia, peeping tom, or mixoscopia. See, very, very often you get questions on perversion, so you have to know the perversions. Very important. Not only the perversions, but also the synonyms of it. Unison is the other name of transvestism. Transvestism, nothing but the person achieves sexual gratification by wearing the dress of opposite sex. So, obviously, that is the answer which we are looking at. Scatologia, it is, you see, that is telephone scatologia. The person talks obscenity over phone and achieves sexual gratification. Peeping Tom, it is voyeurism. The person achieves sexual gratification by watching. By watching the female taking bath, changing dress, all these things. Mixoscopia, it's a variant of voyeurism. It's a type of voyeurism where the person achieves sexual gratification by watching his wife to have sexual intercourse with another man. Okay, that is mixoscopia. It's basically a type of voyeurism. Okay, so that's why I've told you, you need to know the synonyms. We have peeping Tom, we have mixoscopia, we have scotophilia, voyeurism, all are same. Okay, scatologia is like talking obscenity, unison is otherwise called as transvestism and the option which you are searching was unison. So option A can be chosen. A 25 year old girl with alleged history of rape brought for medical examination, treatment by the, uh, medical examination or treatment by the inspector of police. You are the gynecologist examining the victim. The victim refuses to give consent for forensic examination procedures. What best to be done? Treatment alone to be given, okay. Victim can be examined as usual as it is under request of police. Get a court order and examine the victim. Collect and preserve the for forensic samples alone. Nothing to be done. Friends, this is one of the very, very important question. I've given a case-based scenario. This is one of the very practical questions very often you will come across. See, a victim is brought for medical examination in the case of rape and she is not giving consent. Can you examine her or not? 
do remember friends when she is not giving consent even the court cannot compel her for medical examination you can only give treatment see she has come for treatment and medical examination she has not consented for medical examination so you can just give treatment alone you cannot just refuse treatment for that if she is not giving consent for police procedure and medical examination and collection of samples that doesn't mean that that doesn't stop you from giving treatment right you cannot refuse treatment for that you have to give treatment right you may not examine you may not uh, preserve the samples but you should give treatment again that is another you have a legal obligation for that we have 357 c crpc 357 c crpc it states that all the doctors every doctor that is both government and private all the doctors have to give first aid free of cost immediately to the victims of rape and vitri or large without any cost and after that you need to intimate the police police intimation is mandatory from the doctor side right this is 357 c crpc you cannot refuse see they can give a case scenario a patient has come with alleged history of vitreal large and you're working in a private clinic what next to be done you can refuse treatment since you're working in a government hospital a private hospital send it to a government hospital treat give treatment like that you can be given many options so do remember even if you are working in a private hospital or private clinic the first aid has to be given for these victims the first aid first aid treatment has to be given to the victims of rape and vitreal loss that is a legal obligation and if there is a violation if you are not treating under this particular section you can be punished under 166b ipc right 166b so do remember that victim can be examined as usual just now i told you you cannot examine you, the victim cannot be examined without a consent even the court cannot do that you cannot collect the forensic samples when she is not giving consent and you have to give treatment so option a would be the most ideal for this particular question a 14 year old girl comes to hospital unaccompanied she alleges that she had been raped by 16 year old boy the girl is pregnant 16 weeks of gestation and she is willing for mtp i have given an assertion reasoning type you just see that assertion as per the new mtp amendment act of 2020 2021 right the M mtp may be conducted by one doctor only after a consent as a pregnancy is due to the result of the rape okay so this is very tricky question uh, you need to just uh, read every word of this question you need to read the question verbatim word by word you have to read because right we don't know where the clue is and what are the words that are distractors actually speaking the assertion reasoning both are both are distractors the point is she is 14 year old girl that is first keyword and the second keyword is she had come unaccompanied when she is 14 year old girl and she had come unaccompanied you cannot give you cannot conduct mtp at all right when she is a minor if there is a guardian you can get consent from the guardian you can go ahead with the procedure but here she had come unaccompanied she is a minor you cannot do mtp right so whatever may be the assertion and reason both are wrong okay both are wrong and i have given specifically this new amendment of 2021 to distract you mtp may be conducted by one doctor only after consent yes but when she is a major or if there is a guardian for a minor not for this case okay as their pregnancy due to the result of rape yet you can do that uh, because it is uh, rape on humanitarian grounds you can do mtp but for all the latest uh, uh, classes and updates about this mtp amendment uh, act 2021 we have, have uploaded one video on it so do watch it the most important points about this amendment act 2021 you need to get updated okay fine a man has extramarital affair with another woman and he is able to satisfy her but he is unable to have intercourse with his own own wife this is basically psychological impotency we call it as quad hack right important towards a particular person adultery you know that's an extramarital affair a man is having sexual intercourse with uh, another woman other than his wife and do remember adultery is decriminalized in india earlier there was 497 ipc but that is decriminalized but adultery can be a divorce a ground for divorce right for civil grounds it's a ground which it's not a crime basically fecundation ab extra fertilization outside the genital cavity 
that is fecundation app extra sterility you know frigidity frigidity is a female sexual coldness the female is not responding to sexual stimulus and that is one of the corresponding term for impotency in males right if there is impotency in males we have corresponding term in females that is frigidity a boy was brought by the police for medical examination he is alleged to have committed rape on a girl in this case uh, age e below age of dash years cannot be charged and punished of rape is there any specific minimum limit for uh, punishing the accused there is no minimum limit basically for an accused in india but for punishment right that's why i've given you the word charged and punished okay but for punishment you have to remember this particular thing that is that is your 7 years that is based on the concept that it is 82 ipc okay what does 82 ipc states it states that nothing is an offense committed by a person less than 7 years of age he is not criminally responsible so he cannot be punished for punishment we have a we have a minimum limit that is 7 years right the 82 ipc and do remember 83 ipc as well that is 7 to 12 years depending on the mental maturity you can give uh, punishment right and 84 ipc that is criminal response for insane person we know that moving on to the next question a ch girl child was brought to the casualty with issue of penetrative sexual assault during the examination which of the following finding you would expect at the least least okay we are not asking you the most common finding which is the least possible finding the key word here is the girl child the girl child the girl child has come with penetrative sexual assault and in a case of girl child with the issue of penetration the least expected thing is torn hymen because hymen does not usually torn in a in a sexual assault on a girl child because the hymen is underdeveloped and it is deep seated it's deep seated so it, it's very very highly unlikely for you to see examine the torn hymen you cannot expect the torn hymen in such case and there is one more case where you get uh, intact hymen in spite of having sexual intercourse that condition is called as false virginity false virginity is where uh, there will be intact hymen in spite of sexual intercourse when the hymen may be too loose it may be too elastic it may be too thick the hymen might not rupture okay ajay 18 year old boy is in relationship with hima 17 year old girl he has consented sexual intercourse with her ajay was arrested and hima was brought for medical examination first of all why ajay was arrested ajay was arrested because the age of the girl 17 look at the age of the girl that is 17 years sexual intercourse with the girl of uh, 17 years that is less than 18 years sex with the girl less than 18 years even with consent it amounts to rape statutory rape that's why ajay was arrested and uh, hima was brought for medical examination in this case her medical examination of hima can be done under dash section right earlier we saw that examination on a victim cannot be conducted without consent now she is giving consent but under what section we can do medical examination i have given you all the section related to medical examination in rape case so we have to know that there are high chances that we might get a case by scenario on this c53 a high pc crpc it's it is basically the medical examination of accused it is the medical examination of accused under police request right it is under police request and section 54 crpc it is also the medical examination of accused only but it is under his own request based on accused respect request itself 164 a crpc this is the section that gives about medical examination of victim okay so this is the section which details the procedures about the medical examination of rape victim right it has to be uh, examined by it has it has to be the female has to be examined only by the female practitioner registered medical practitioner if not the medical examination has to be done under the supervision of female attender or a female nurse someone like that and you have to get consent from the victim so that you can start with the examination okay so these are the questions we have seen in the sexual jurisprudence chapter so i'll be back with the next video on the next chapter that is stomatology all the best